Welcome to Animated Science. Today we're looking at transport mechanisms again. Uh, mainly, we are looking at vesicular transport. Um, so just a quick review, we looked over passive transport and active transport. Passive transport, no energy is required and it's going to use diffusion as its main mechanism, meaning you're going to have molecules move from high concentration to low concentration. Simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion are part of passive diffusion and those are going to transport their specific molecules. Within facilitated diffusion you have a carrier, you have ion channels, and you have aquaporin channels and those are the proteins that are going to be moving those molecules. Underneath active transport we talked about pumps, specifically we talked about the sodium potassium pump last time and today we're going to be going through vesicular transport which is the other facet of active transport. Alright, so let's get into it. Uh, vesicular transport is going to be using a vesicle which is a phospholipid bilayer sac used for storage and transport. So there are two mechanisms of vesicular transport. You have exocytosis and endocytosis. And of course exocytosis is things or vesicles moving out of the cell and endocytosis uh, are vesicles that are moving into the cell. So we're going to be carrying objects into the cell using endocytosis. So let's look at a couple of types of endocytosis. So the first one being phagocytosis, which is moving solids and organisms through the membrane using a vesicle. So let's go into our bloodstream. We have a bacteria here that we're focused on and a white blood cell comes out of nowhere and is ready to eat this guy. Um, so the way that this white blood cell is going to phagocytize this bacteria um, let's kind of simplify this white blood cell real quick so we can see the actual plasma membrane uh, itself and what it does. So our bacteria is going to get swallowed up by the membrane of the white blood cell. So it extends its membrane out, forms a vesicle around that, and the membrane merges back together. So let's go into our next mechanism, penocytosis, which is moving fluids and solutes. We have some solutes out in the plasma. We wouldn't see them because they would be dissolved in the plasma. However, our cell is going to do the same thing, extend its membrane out, and going to pull those fluids in. So we could say this is cellular drinking. Our last mechanism here is receptor mediated. So we have receptors on the outside of the cell. It's going to bind to certain solutes or uh, molecules within the extracellular fluid and our vesicle pull them into the cell. So those are mechanisms of endocytosis. Exocytosis is just the opposite. We have something from within the cell that is going to be coming out and a vesicle is moving from the endomembrane network and we're going to be pushing a usually a secretory protein out. All right, so that was very quick on vesicular transports. Um, in the next couple of videos, and these are going to be intermediate videos, we're going to talk about secondary active and primary active transport, which kind of bridge the gap uh, between passive transport and active transport. Uh, so if you're interested in that, and if you need to know about that, um, the link will be in the description and a card will pop up. Uh, if I have already created that video. Also, when we take a look at our membrane potential, we will discuss mechanically gated, ligand gated, and voltage gated ion channels. So this kind of completes our outline of our uh, transport mechanisms. Um, so with that, we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.